In this video, we learn how to construct or draw a frequency density histogram. And to do that, we're going to be working through the example we see here, in which we're told that the heights in centimeters of 200 students were recorded and summarized in the table below. And so that's the frequency table here, involving grouped continuous data. We're then simply told, construct a frequency density histogram for this data. Okay, well to do that, the first thing we need to do is add two columns to our table. The first of which is the class width. Don't worry, I'll explain, but first let me simply add a long row like this, and I'll quickly construct two columns like so. And as I said, the first column we need to add is the class width column. Class width. There we go. And we'll usually refer to the class width with the letter W. And in fact, let me quickly add some rows. There we go. Now, each of the class widths we need to enter here corresponds to the width of the class interval we have on that row. So for this first class interval from 150 to 155 centimeters, the class width here would be equal to 5. And just to be clear, I'm getting this 5 by subtracting 150 from 155. And so let me quickly write that, that's 155 minus 150, which of course equals to 5. And so doing the same thing for each of the rows we have inside our table, the next class width would be 160 minus 155, which would be 5 again. We'd then have 170 minus 160, which would be 10. Next we'd have 180 minus 170, which would be 10 again. And finally, we'd have 200 minus 180, which would be 20. There we go, we now have all of our class widths. Finally, the last column we need to add to our table here is for the frequency density. And I'll just write that, frequency density. And each frequency density inside this table corresponds to the value we obtained by dividing the frequency of that row by the class width of that row. And in fact, alongside frequency density here, we'll often write f over w, as in frequency divided by class width. And I could go ahead and write an f here next to frequency, just to specify that's where I'm getting the values of f from. So here's how that works. For this first frequency density, I need to divide the frequency 7 by the class width 5. And by all means check, but 7 divided by 5 is equal to 1.4. On the next row, the frequency density will be 18 divided by 5, which is equal to 3.6. On the next row, we'll have 45 divided by 10, which is 4.5. On the next row, we'll have 57 divided by 10, which is 5.7. And finally, for the last frequency density we need, we'll have 73 divided by 20, which is 3.65. Done. These frequency densities, as well as the class intervals we have for the height here, are all we need to construct the frequency density histogram. And so here's how to do that. On the right hand side of the screen here, you've no doubt noticed that I've already drawn some axes all ready for us to draw the frequency density histogram. So let's go ahead. The first thing I'll say is that we'll always use the horizontal axis for the variable that's being observed. And in this example, we're observing people's heights. So this horizontal axis represents the people's height, so I'll just write h, and that's the heights in centimeters. So I'll write that here, height in centimeters. The vertical axis, on the other hand, will always represent the frequency density. And so at the top of the axis here, I'll go ahead and write f over w, which as we said before, is the frequency density. Okay, now on the horizontal axis, the values I'll be considering go from 150 all the way up to 200. And so I'll write a 150 here. And so carefully selecting a scale here, we should find that this fits. I'll have 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, and 200 right there. Notice this little symbol here on the horizontal axis, which tells us that we've cut or truncated the axis so that we could start directly at 150. Now, on my vertical axis, which remember is the frequency density, the maximum frequency density I have is 5.7, so I'll make sure I can go up to 6. 
And so I'll say I have one here, two right there, three, four, five, and six. There we go. And all we have to do now is draw the frequency density histogram. And for that, remember, the only two columns we need to focus on are the height, which I'm boxing right now, as well as the frequency density, which I'm boxing as well right now. There we go. Okay, so for the class interval going from 150 to 155, the frequency density is 1.4. And so let me add 155 to my horizontal axis right there. From 150 to 155, the frequency density is 1.4, so I'll draw a rectangle at that height. And I'll do that in blue here. That would look something like this. There we go. That would be 1.4. Next, for the class interval going from 155 to 160, the frequency density is 3.6. And so from 155 to 160 here, I draw a box that's 3.6 high. And that would look something like this. There we go. I carry on. For the class interval going from 160 to 170, the frequency density is 4.5. And so from 160 to 170, we'll draw a big box going up to 4.5 in height. And so if I do that here, that's 4.5. There we go. Of course, a perfect job would be done with a ruler, but I'll carry on as it is. And next, for the class interval from 170 to 180, the frequency density is 5.7. And so from 170 to 180 here, I'll draw a box at a height of 5.7. And so that will look something like this. There we go. Finally, for the last class interval going from 180 to 200, so that spans across this entire width here on the horizontal axis, the frequency density is 3.65 which would look something like this. There we go. And that's it. We've now drawn the frequency density histogram for this data. And if we wanted to, we could hatch or shade each of these rectangles. And in fact, I'll do that quickly here. There we go. Now there are a couple of things worth pointing out about this frequency density histogram. The first of which is the fact that in a histogram or a frequency density histogram, the rectangles we have are all touching. In other words, there's no gap in between each of these rectangles. And that should always be the case. Indeed, the fact that these rectangles touch the way they do tells us that we're dealing with continuous data and highlights the fact that we're not dealing with a bar chart here. Instead, we're dealing with a histogram, or more specifically in this case, a frequency density histogram. The second thing I'll point out here is something that you've no doubt noticed already, and that is that the class widths aren't always equal in a frequency density histogram. Indeed, when finding the class widths earlier on, we found two class widths of five, two of 10, and one of 20. And that results in having rectangles of different base. In other words, these rectangles don't always have the same width. That being said, the last thing I'll say about this frequency density histogram is that the area of each of the rectangles we have here is equal to the frequency of its corresponding class interval. So for example, if I were to calculate the area of this rectangle, which as we can see spans over the class interval from 170 to 180 centimeters, and in fact I'll write area, area, well, that would be equal to the base of the rectangle, which is 10, and so I'll just quickly write 10, times the height of that rectangle. And its height, well, remember, that was 5.7. Indeed, that was the frequency density we found for the class interval 170 to 180. So the height of this rectangle is 5.7, and so the area is equal to 10 times 5.7, which is equal to 57, which as we can see right here, in fact, I'll circle that in green as well, is equal to the frequency for that class interval. There we go. And the same could be said for any of these rectangles and its corresponding class interval. And in fact, let's consider a quick second example. Let's say we didn't have this frequency table, but we were given this frequency density histogram. 
and we were asked how many people measured between 160 and 170 centimeters. Then all we'd have to do to answer that question is calculate the area of the rectangle that spans over that class interval. And we quickly realized that since the class width here is 10, in other words, the base of the rectangle is 10, and because the height of that rectangle is 4.5, its area would be 10 times 4.5, which is 45. And so we could say that there are 45 people measuring between 160 and 170 centimeters. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial on how to construct or draw a frequency density histogram.